let me let me say this: Are white guys are they eligible for the playbook? I don't want to discriminate. Okay. But where I am in my life right now, I need black men. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. You won't turn your back on I, love. I I believe it is out. Th- I just y'all gotta give me some a space for a second. Right. I need I need to come home for a little bit. You need to come home for a little bit. Okay. What does that mean? You need to come home for a little bit. White guys are off the table. Why? The more I hear about Rachel Lindsay's divorce from Brian Abasolo, the more honestly sick to my stomach I get. If you're not caught up, Brian actually filed to divorce Rachel back in January. Now, unfortunately, these two never signed a prenup, so Brian is seeking spousal support from Rachel. Keep in mind, these two have no children together. Obviously, Rachel probably is not comfortable with paying spousal support whatsoever. I wouldn't be either, but she's willing to cough up nearly five figures each month. According to new legal documents... Rachel Lindsay says based on what they each bring in per month, she would be cutting Brian Abasolo a monthly check of $9,882 in spousal support. In the documents, Rachel says she's bringing in $61,000 per month, and she calculates his gross monthly income as $13,000 from his work as a chiropractor. Brian claims he only made $16,000 in all of 2023, but Rachel is saying this is hard to believe and that she believes he also receives some income from social media. Brian's also refusing to move out of their home and isn't paying a fair share of expenses around the house since filing divorce. I feel really, really bad for Rachel. It's a shame that they didn't get a prenup in the first place, but you can't change things at this point. And Rachel's talked about not getting a prenup, saying that she was in a completely different financial situation when they first got together than where she is now. And she also wanted to get the prenup, but it didn't seem like her and Brian were on the same page at that moment. So yeah, this is a crazy story. I just want her to be free of this situation because it's horrible. But let me know what you guys think down below. Let me get this straight. You married a white guy. Now you are having to pay alimony. Now you don't want to date white guys anymore because white guys are the issue. We've spoken about this before. People that use race as their problem are always the problem. Now you've dated you picked a bad white guy. Now, all of a sudden, you want black guys? You'll probably pick a bad black guy, dude. The race ain't the problem. You pick poorly. That's the problem. And you now, all of a sudden, I want to come back home, is absolving yourself of your responsibility, of your accountability in this situation. What you need to do is <laughs> analyze your situation, look at what you did wrong, and improve from it. You want to come home? What the hell? I need a man. Yep. I need a man. (laughs) I had to call my daddy today and ask him to help me with some money to pay my bills. I need a man. I don't want to be a powerful, independent woman. I don't want to try to fix my own refrigerator. I should be upstairs doing a live, reading questions about if your exes are coming back. This is bullshit. Tired of being an independent woman. These videos just feel so wrong to me. You know, only coming to the realization that you need a man when you need something paid for or you need something fixed. You don't need a man. You don't sound like you need a man. You need a plumber. You need someone to pay your bills. Maybe you need a sugar daddy. You know, I can imagine how women would cook a man if he came out 40, 50 year old. Talking about, oh man, I need a woman. You know, look at all these dishes. (laughs) Ah, shit. I need a woman. Come on. Uh, Look at my floor. He needs to be mopped. I need a woman. They would cook him. Y'all want to be independent? That's great. But not me. I don't want to be independent. I don't want no bills in my name. The electric, the cable, the internet, the heat, the gas, the car note. At 36 years old, I'm understanding that being strong is not a flex and I am tired. 
Do you know how bad I want to just sit down, relax, and allow someone to come into my space and love me properly? Is it just me or is it fucking exhausting? Like I would just like for once to find someone that I could finally let down my guard fully and get to be taken care of and pampered. And I see girls online who have these fantastic guys that do all this stuff for them and I'm so jealous. I'm just sick and tired of being the strong black woman. I love being strong. I love the fact that I'm strong, but I'm tired of it. Like, I'm tired. I want to change the narrative. Like somebody change the narrative for me, please. Hello? I've always said this, okay? I do like being the bearer of bad news and I'm going to give some bad news. It is too late. The idea that you can just switch it off and not be strong and independent it doesn't make sense the idea that you after 35 36 years would just be able to allow a man to have the sort of autonomy over you that will be required in order to have this soft pampered life you can't do it you won't be able to do it even the way you're looking at not being a strong independent woman anymore is selfish and it says that you're not ready because these women never speak about i'm ready to care for a man i'm ready to do x y and c i'm ready to be a homemaker no it's always i'm ready to get this sort of treatment i'm ready to be pampered it's always me 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 you're not ready you're just tired but it's too late you should have figured this out 10 years ago so I'm a single doctor in my 30s and watching both Jen Tran as well as Kintaji uh, Brown Jackson, the Supreme Court Justice, online about their loves or lack thereof is, yeah, it's, it's just bringing back a lot of different memories from my past. Part of it's a little bit triggering, not gonna lie. So I'm currently single in Los Angeles, but, and yes, the dating in Los Angeles is not ideal, but I went to med school in central Illinois and it was a lot of white people from central Illinois and just like the Midwest in general. For four years, I felt like I was just almost invisible, right? Like glossed over um, by the date, the whole like dating pool, because, you know, when we were, a lot of us were in our early twenties, we, we got to med school and we're all trying to date. And a lot of guys just preferred the girl next door, Jennifer Aniston types, which, you know, nothing wrong with that, but just feeling like you're just kind of glossed over or your second choice, or you're almost kind of like, you're almost kind of like you're not for them. Right. Which in itself is fine. I feel like I generally went to Chicago, which is only about two hours away and dated mostly there. Um, and kind of did like a semi long distance type of situation. It's almost like I imported men from Chicago. It, 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 was, it was weird, whatever. So seeing Jen Tran on Bachelorette, or I, I, I didn't even watch a Bachelorette, but just kind of seeing that whole thing play out and a lot of Asian American girls on TikTok coming out being like, a lot of Midwestern girls, Midwestern Asian girls kind of felt this way. Another component of this is that a lot of our male classmates, um, their girlfriends, that they met while in med school a lot of them decided to follow the guys to wherever they matched so a big portion of our career we have no control of we, we don't really have much control over where we're going to end up are we already seeing a pattern here the asian community they're known for being very education driven right they push their kids their women are very focused on their education are very focused on their success what do we know about successful women? It's tough. And the fact that the men in your class, their women moved with them. I know for a fact, you wouldn't sacrifice your career or you wouldn't change careers or you wouldn't wait a year or you wouldn't do anything to alter your trajectory for a man. But there are women who would. And that's your competition. Going. Um, we don't, we just got to go wherever we get into med school. We, and then for residency, at, one day in March, everyone finds out where they're going across the country. And besides that, you just like, don't know. Um, because it's so competitive and there's a whole match system and whatever. But all these girlfriends were like, yeah, of course, we're going to follow you to wherever you're going. 
there were a few guys who had done that but it was like very very few I think it was like one or two and none of them were minority girls so a lot of the minority girls I think honestly just kind of stayed single sort of kind of dated and then you know when we left for residency to bigger cities met our partners or um, met their boyfriends and met their husbands and now happily married and then during all this I actually did date someone who was in another med school an hour away from me uh, who was grade lower and um, we dated when I had just turned fourth year we so the discussion of like okay what are we doing once like let's say if I match somewhere else for residency and my thing was I really want to go to New York um, and the boyfriend at the time said I'll, co I'll come with you I'll follow you and I was very surprised and pleasantly surprised I was kind of like are you sure and we were having this discussion and then eventually it, it, it came about that what he meant was he'll follow me but then we'd go back to Illinois but my thing was once I leave Illinois I'll probably won't go back so we broke up and then during all of this during med school we came across a lot of women physicians who were in the surgical field or just a competitive field and a lot of them were single even the non-surgical specialties um they a lot of them were also single it was almost like a given that female doctors at the time, this was like 10 years ago, was that you were going to be single because you chose this field and that no man was going to follow you. Oh my God, I didn't think I, I was going to get emotional for this, but... But the... But the it was almost like a given that the girlfriends of these med students would follow them, but it was almost a given that the men wouldn't for the girls. Um, so seeing Dr. Kentaji Brown Jackson's husband, who's a physician himself, saying, I'll follow you wherever you need to go, which is let's move to D.C. because I believe that you will become the supreme court justice seeing that love is just so heartwarming to me and like makes me hopeful that um not not just that even the ch times are changing right because i think i do see a lot of uh couples online especially like the um, women med students and the women residents and um the younger couples whose boyfriends and husbands do follow them which is great to see but throughout my med school, they it, it was almost like a belief that that was not possible. So, yeah. That isn't love. I'm sorry to go ahead and tell you, okay? You're in med school. You're meeting other guys in med school. They're as headstrong as you are. They're as driven as you are. They are as focused on their success as you are yours. What Ken Taji Brown or Ken whatever her name is found in that man was a man who wasn't as headstrong, who wasn't as driven, who was willing to sacrifice for his partner because he's not as driven as she is. That's what you need to hope you can find. But it's difficult in your field. And that's the problem. The way you view life is exactly how a man views life. I'm gonna get my career, I'm gonna be successful, and I'm gonna get a woman to bring into that. That's exactly how you view it. You're going to be successful, you're going to have your career, and you're going to get a man to bring into that. Whereas those men are looking out, and then there are women who are saying, I will follow you wherever you need to go. It's always going to be difficult for women like you, because you can't have it all. You just can't. And this is her responding to a comment that says, men do not look for the same thing in partners that women look for. I couldn't give a shit what you've done with your career. And her response was, men in my comments jealous that I'm a doctor. You can, you can see why she's single, right? Now look, could the man have said this comment in a more digestible way? Of course, he was clearly doing this to get a response or get her riled up in whatever way. He didn't have to say he doesn't give a shit about her career because if you're a doctor, you're a physician, that's notable. That's something to be respected. But... He's right. The men that a woman like this will be looking for, your career, it's not like they won't care about your career, but it doesn't do anything for them. So the likelihood of them sacrificing what they've got going on for you 
it doesn't it doesn't make sense This liquor got me get my zone Now I'm blowing up your phone Blowing we smoke in the ozone I just can't let this go This liquor got me in my zone Now I'm blowing up your phone Blowing we smoke